All right, so I was watching Bill Simmons' podcast uh, just the other day. He had Charles Barkley on as a guest. They covered a number of different topics, so they uh, kind of hit on the WNBA for a bit. Talked about Caitlin Clark and that entire situation in her rookie year and went all the way over to even discussing some NBA topics, which you could have predicted and guessed they were going to discuss. And they landed on a conversation about the Milwaukee Bucks. And Charles Barkley basically talked about how he isn't feeling Milwaukee as a team this season as a legitimate title contender. And that naturally turned into a criticism of Giannis and Tedekumbo. A couple of things. For one, I do think that people are pretty premature with their heavy criticisms of this Bucks team. And I kind of saw that coming after they made that Damian Lillard trade. I kind of knew if things didn't work out perfectly in year one with Dame and Giannis being this duo, people were going to jump to these conclusions and start talking about them like they were this great team on paper, but they aren't built to win a title. Similar to how people kind of talk about the Suns or other super teams that we've seen built over the last couple of seasons. The reason that's premature is, yes, it is true that some super teams and superstar pairings and trios or whatever don't work. But the other side of the coin is, sometimes even when you have these all-star caliber players and superstar caliber players playing together, there still is upside. And maybe it'll take a few years, maybe a year or two, to develop. So I'm not ready to throw the Phoenix Suns away completely because I knew there were some holes on the roster. Yeah, they had three great players, but there wasn't that much great great playmaking outside of those three guys. And they were kind of asking certain players to fill roles that they weren't optimized in, right? So that's kind of why I still think there's a lot of upside in Phoenix because them having three all-stars and Beal, Booker, and KD, I knew they had that, but there was still a hole and a void on their roster. And they had that point guard in the offseason that got in Tyus Jones to kind of balance out that offense a bit. Same with the Bucks here. Everything isn't going to happen in just one season. We saw that with the Miami Heat. 2011, they formed together. That's Chris Bosh, LeBron, and Dwayne Wade. Best trio on paper in the NBA. And they didn't win a championship in year one. Now, they did get to the NBA Finals, and they were, by default, the best team in the Eastern Conference. But still, they disappointed in the Finals just to come back and win back-to-back the season after that. So that could be the same thing here with the Milwaukee Bucks. Everything, just because you're like a super team on paper or you have like these superstar level players, doesn't mean by default you're going to win and dominate straight out of the gates, right? Sometimes it is going to take a few years or maybe a year or whatever to fully develop. Now, your window to make that work is a little smaller than other developing teams because if you have that talent, then the expectations are going to be extremely high. But as I said, everything isn't going to be solved in just one year. There's also this, and people ignore this way too much with Milwaukee. They went through a lot last season. So for one, Chris Middleton was only there for 55 games. That's 10 games under like the minimum to qualify for any major award, like MVP, most improved player, and those sorts of things. So it's tough to mesh when your third best player, who happens to be a really good shot creator and former all-star Chris Middleton, isn't there for a significant part of the season. So if you watched them play, you kind of knew that there was something missing. Those guys weren't super in sync with one another. So there was that reality. There's also the coaching thing. They went through essentially three different head coaches in under a year. There was Mike Budenholzer, who they won a championship with back in 2021, fired him, brought back Adrian Griffin. And that was a really weird stint because he had a record good enough to make him the all-star game head coach in the East, but the players weren't meshing, got rid of him, and brought back Doc Rivers. That is a very strange situation for a contending team to go through three different head coaches in that short span of time. Last time we kind of saw that, I would say it was like the Cavs. Cavaliers when they made the finals in 2015 under David Blatt, fired him the season afterwards and went and got Tyron Lue and won a championship that season uh, back in 2016. That's another example of a team that got formed with great all-star talent between LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love and didn't win in year one, came back and won, in my opinion, the greatest NBA final series in 2016. But like I said, that's like another situation of like a team having to go through so many rapid coaching changes and still being able to remain competent enough to win a title. That's just two coaches in under a year. So the Buck situation is super, super rare. That's why I give them grace. There's obviously also the obvious fact that Dame and Giannis were not healthy at all in that first round. I'm willing to bet a pretty healthy amount that if those two guys were there in the first round, 
the Pacers would not have had their way. And I'm not trying to take any credit away from the Pacers and Tyrese Halliburton and Siakam. Those guys were amazing in that series. But things would have looked completely different if Giannis was out there playing with Damian Lillard for the entirety of that series. In my opinion, that series would have went five at the most if both of those guys were healthy together, right? So there is that. Second point I want to make is this. Uh, I kind of feel like Giannis is getting to that point where the criticism is louder than the appreciation. So that's kind of happened to a lot of all-star, superstar level players over the last couple of seasons where they've done so many significant things on the court, on paper and all of this stuff. But there are so many criticisms and they may be fair criticisms, but those criticisms outweigh the appreciation that that player should get. So a perfect example, in my opinion, is Russell Westbrook. Now. Westbrook is different than Giannis because Westbrook never led his team to the NBA Finals, nor does he have a championship and Finals MVP like Giannis does. But what Russell Westbrook was doing, like in those post-Kevin Durant years with the triple doubles and all that stuff, it was unreal. And we may not see that happen in a long time. Now, Luka's playing in the NBA right now, and there are a bunch of other really good all-around players. We could see it replicated on the stat sheet with those triple-doubles, but the vibe with Russ was just different, right? And he did so many amazing things, but he kind of left his stint in OKC and really up to this point as a player that I feel like is underappreciated. Was he a perfect player? No, right? Never really got a reliable perimeter jump shot, had some issues in the playoffs. There were definitely some series where he should have been able to lead his team to a victory and just couldn't come through. I'm looking especially at that season where they lost in the first round to the Utah Jazz that were led by rookie Donovan Mitchell. That was an embarrassing loss, and I kind of feel like a lot of people started looking at Russell Westbrook a certain way at that point in time. But still, even with those flaws, we saw Russ do some very significant things that, in my opinion, should not be ignored and so for him the criticism is way louder than the appreciation same also with James Harden and look I get the Harden criticism but if you look at his prime there are only a couple of guys we saw play at that level offensively in NBA history right Harden in his prime was absolutely ridiculous now I know he wasn't absolutely perfect in the playoffs but again we kind of let the criticisms for James Harden shadow the appreciation for James Harden. And people have to kind of go back and talk about James Harden and how great he was in his prime as if it's like this taboo thing, right? Like on Twitter, if I'm going to go tweet about something James Harden did, it's going to be something on the grounds of y'all must have forgot how great James Harden was in his prime. We shouldn't forget, but those narratives about him kind of made us forget. That's happening a little bit here with Giannis. We just saw him have a ridiculous season where he averaged 30 points per game on 60% shooting from the floor. Yet too many times a common talking point with Giannis is his perceived lack of skill. Now, I think that is... Kind of an unfair criticism because Giannis is a very skilled player, more skilled than a lot of people give him credit for. There are some things that he does very well that I think is actually underrated at that people aren't really noticing. So for one, I talked about this before. I actually talked about this on a video I put out a couple of days ago. Giannis's playmaking is elite. He is one of the most underrated passers and playmakers in the entire league, whether he's kind of getting out of transition and setting guys up. Giannis is a really good playmaker, really good IQ guy when it comes to setting up other guys. Saying that to say, Giannis's skill set has gone completely underappreciated because a lot of people talk about him as if he has no skill set. So perfect example, Charles Barkley saying that Giannis just plays a style of basketball that's essentially one on five in transition where you're trying to barrel into guys and all that stuff. Um, I get it, and I do think there are some limitations in his offensive game, but you don't accomplish the things Giannis accomplishes without having some level of skill, right? Giannis also has a really good basketball IQ. People talk about Giannis as if he does not have that. To average 30 on 60% shooting, and actually have multiple seasons of averaging 30. A lot of times people talk about basketball IQ just kind of when they're referencing passing and playmaking, right? Like that's like the primary thing that comes to mind when people say IQ is passing and things like that. But knowing how to get to your spots and play to your strengths, that is high basketball IQ. I would argue, and I hope you all would agree with this, that Giannis is a high IQ player because he's really good at getting over to his spots. You don't average 30 points per game for multiple seasons, especially average 30 points per game on 60% shooting 
without a high IQ, without knowing how to get to your spots. Giannis does that very well. Go look at the championship he won in 2021. He was so good in that series because he was consistently attacking from areas that were his areas of strength, right? Kind of attacking out of the mid range. He take jump shots here and there, but I generally think Giannis knows and has a good idea of what his strengths and weaknesses are and plays to those strengths and weaknesses. That a lot of times is not recognized as basketball IQ, but it should be recognized as basketball IQ. And the point that Giannis has consistently been this great, has put up those ridiculously efficient scoring numbers for such a long time these last couple of seasons speaks to how skilled he truly is and how high his basketball IQ is as well. So that's one thing I want to say is, yes, I agree that there are some holes in Giannis's game. So for one, he does have to get a reliable enough jumper at some point in time. There are questions about sustainability. Right now he's 29. So when he reaches like 34 or 35 years old, is he going to be able to do some of the same things he's doing now? Answer to that is no. So knowing that he's going to have to get some finesse in his game, maybe a mid-range game. I always never thought that Giannis had to become like a prolific three-point shooter, but becoming reliable Reliable enough as a creator from like the mid range area would be would be perfect for him. But those things aside, right? Those are fair critiques of Giannis's game at this point in his career. But don't let the critiques outweigh the appreciation. This guy has done way too many significant things on both ends of the floor. Has shown that he's good enough to lead a team to a championship. Um, that I just feel like too much. People are kind of ignoring it. And the criticisms of him are a little bit too loud. And as I said, I kind of saw it happening uh, after the season came to an abrupt end and Milwaukee never really got in rhythm. I knew people were going to kind of jump to these conclusions. There is also this kind of, um, you know, notion that Dame was overrated, like he didn't have an amazing season last year, really because of chemistry things and fit things. It looked like he was trying to figure stuff out with the Bucks. But we're seeing what kind of an underwhelming season can do to a player's reputation and things of that nature. So those are my thoughts on Giannis. Yes, there are some voids he has to fill in his game, but we shouldn't let him kind of fall into that same territory that Russ fell into or that kind of Carmelo fell into or James Harden fell into where they were doing some amazing things. But uh, the critiques of those guys significantly outweighed the appreciation of their game, especially with Giannis, because as I said, he has something that those three guys don't. And that is an NBA championship, an NBA Finals MVP, and one of the greatest closing performances in NBA Finals history. Now, for Giannis at this point in his career, if you want to have the legacy conversations, it's going to come down to consistently repeating that championship success year in and year out. You have to win multiple championships to be considered like a top 10 player of all time. He has top 10 upside, but in order to be within that top 10, you have to win multiple. Jordan did it. Braun did it. Kobe did it. Tim Duncan did it. Shaq did it. Uh, millions of guys um, who we look at as those NBA legend type of players, those top 10, 15 guys, they were able to win championships, multiple championships over X amount of time. And that's what's separating those guys from the guys right now, like Jokic and like Giannis, um, you know, and even, you know, I guess like the Jason Tatums of the world, and we'll see what they do this coming season, but repeating and sustaining that championship success is huge to kind of end up a little bit higher in those all time conversations. So with Steph Curry, uh, he, LeBron, I think Kevin Durant is well, even though it's kind of an unpopular opinion, those are guys, in my opinion, who are just kind of adding icing on the cake at this point in their careers because they've shown that ability to repeat that championship success, right? Uh, that's absolutely huge, and Giannis has to get that at this particular point in time. That's why that quote-unquote best player in the league conversation is changing almost every single year uh, because none of those guys have shown the ability, like Jokic or like Giannis, those guys have not shown the ability to repeat that championship success. So as I said, I understand the critique for the Bucks and the critiques for Giannis, but some of those critiques are overreactions, um, especially with Giannis, particularly with how much we criticize his game and talk negatively about his game. Uh, if you look at what he's done, his production is just simply some of the best production out of any player in the league today. He's still arguably the best player in the NBA. It's going to be about connecting everything together this coming season for the Bucs, um, being consistent. And I think they'll get it right knowing that Doc Rivers had an entire offseason to develop a game plan to make those guys fit. Hopefully health is uh, going to be better for them this season between Middleton, uh, Giannis himself, who's kind of running into some health issues, some recurring health issues at this point in his career. And also, Dame, health is going to be huge, but I actually do have faith in the Bucks. I think the East is going to look very different. 
if they're all back and healthy with an entire offseason under their belt. So we'll see what ends up happening. But as I said, we should not jump too early to these criticisms of the Bucs. And Giannis at this point has, I think, become over criticized, especially for a guy who's done so many legendary things at this point in his career, including winning a championship. If he didn't have a championship, I'd get it. But Outside of that, he does have a championship. He does have a finals MVP. He does have one of the greatest closing performances in finals history. Don't let the critiques of Giannis outweigh and overshadow the appreciation for his game and the accomplishments he's had at this point in his career.